What's up everybody, do right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Ready or Not because they just released a newsletter and uh, yeah, we're definitely going to get into that. But before we do, we're going to talk about the previous newsletter because I completely missed it. I just didn't have the time to cover it. So we're going to do that before we get into the regular newsletter. And yeah, that's pretty much going to be the whole video. So if you don't want to see the old newsletter, then you can skip to this time here. But if you do, then just keep on watching, you beautiful bastard. All right, so let's just go ahead and hop into it. The name of this newsletter is called The Data Center. Brought to us again by Mr. Kaminsky, one of the community management team members at Void Interactive. It starts off with saying, Attention officers, welcome to the 33rd edition of our bi-weekly development update. Before we dive into this briefing, we want to let you know that Ready or Not has now been available for 10% off during the length of the summer Steam sale, which is now over by the time of this video. But as it was going on, people were kind of complaining about it. They were like, it's not really much of a sale because it's only like $10 off. And yeah, there was just like a lot of mixed feelings between that, but ultimately, a sale is a sale and uh yeah so i'm not gonna finish that just gonna move on to the next thing here an endless stream of data data center sees the los sueños police department raiding the offices and server rooms of a shady tech company the search for sensitive information related to the active case is a race against the clock requiring the player to overcome a series of secured doors and on-site security guards and they have a picture of it here it looks pretty tiny but i mean if it's a race against the clock it kind of makes sense right you wouldn't want a big map because that would just get annoying having to restart it over and over again but yeah this is just a block out map it looks like this thing is definitely not finished it kind of looks like it's out in the middle of nowhere it seems i feel like there would be a lot more wires at a tech center right maybe that's just me underneath the picture it says a very early look at the exterior and surrounding of the map data center underneath that picture is a more zoomed in picture of the data center off to the right here and we can see a bunch of wooden crates it seems like and there's some like wires on the right there yeah see that's what i was kind of talking about right there i feel like there'd be a lot more of that but yeah i definitely like the shape of this i think it's like just the right size so that we're not freaking running around forever on a timed mission i freaking hate time missions in any game and uh yeah underneath this it says a collection of tens of thousands of files all tucked away in the mountainside interesting what type of files are we talking about here just people's files or what data centers interiors combine a series of open spaces utilized by staff and claustrophobic tight stacks of servers with little space to maneuver and underneath this is obviously what looks like a waiting room i assume although why a tech data center would need a waiting room is kind of beyond me like this feels like it would be in more of like a dmv or something but it's interesting to say the least underneath the picture it says watch your fire those vending machines aren't cheap you know is this implying that you can actually shoot out the vending machines and it launches out freaking sodas or something i guess we'll find out when we get into it but underneath this picture is what looks like the server room those green things I'm assuming are supposed to be the servers. Curious to know what we're going to be looking for in here. Underneath the picture, it says a state-of-the-art kitchen, only the finest for company employees. Kitchen? Is that, is that like standard lingo? Like I don't. I haven't worked at a company since like 2013. I do not understand, Mr. Developer Man. But underneath this, it looks like we got another type of server room here. Maybe this is the important one. Not too sure. What even counts as important in a blockout map? I have no idea. But underneath this picture, it says be careful. Everything in this room is valuable and delicate to boot. I'm sure this is implying that if you shoot one of these things, it'll freaking explode with electrical shit. <laughs> but moving on, while data center is still in the very early gray box stages, there's a ton of depth already on display and much more to be added. Our level designers, artists, and story writers are all hard at work putting it together. We look forward to sharing more with you in the future. And that concludes their 33rd bi-weekly briefing, taking a first look at one of Ready or Not's future levels, data center. And with that, we push on to the newest news letter which is briefing 34 character concepts it starts off with saying howdy officer welcome to the 34th edition of their bi-weekly development update in this briefing we're going to be looking at some of the concept art our team has put together for ready or not characters this is their first step in route to being fully integrated suspects and civilians within the game's levels going forward we're going to be changing how we update the community on upcoming patches and how we announce dates to ensure that at a minimum we never have to delay the update ever again in the process of getting the AI rework and the new maps to the supporter edition users for testing, we announced a timetable which in hindsight tells us was a little over optimistic as we had to delay the release a few times. Yeah, it was like, I think four, right? Because they said that it was supposed to come out sometime in April, I believe. And then they pushed it back to May and then they pushed it again to June. They said it was going to come out the first week of June, two or three weeks later. They finally give it to supporters and at the very end, maybe like the 27th, 
11th, they ended up giving it to non-supporters. It just barely made it in that window. So yeah, again, Void Interactive is not great at sticking with the dates that they put out. And it's not something that's new too. Like they've been doing this type of shit for like years and it's getting really annoying. They've even said this too, that they're gonna, you know, not stick out time frames or dates until they actually know that they're ready. It's like, I've heard the same song and dance before and it's getting really old, but at the very least, like the updates are actually good. If it was any other game, I'd probably rip them a new fucking asshole. But Void has been delivering quality updates. So it's just like, well, at least it's good. So it's probably better that they don't put them out unless they know that they can actually hit their damn windows. But anyways, in the future, definite timeframes will not be made public unless we are 100% sure we can deliver on that day, which will hopefully amount to smaller lead times between announcement and update. Scumbags and security guards. Our first character in the spotlight is none other than the charming George Brixley, the prime suspect of our as of now unseen level of agency. Well, we've actually seen it, but it's not completed, unfortunately. And we get a picture of this guy. He looks like someone that would be at like a freaking preschool or something, like trying to tell people how to color things. Why this would be at a data center is weird. But Mr. Brixley, with his tools of the trade for perfect touch-ups with a smile that could rot. Oh, I don't know if I like that description. Greasy, smug, unkempt, any number of words could be mustered to describe George Brixley, except perhaps for wholesome. His exploitative work at the agency makes him and the fruits of his labor a top priority for police to bring down, but won't be alone, and he certainly won't be unprepared. Oh, so wait a minute. Agency was... So I made a video, and I just randomly... Because it looked like a child center to me. I put the title as, What kind of child daycare are they running here? Because it looked like a child center to me, and there was like this photo room that said like pornography room or something like that. I'd have to look at it again, but yeah, I remember that. I was like, what the hell? So I guess this confirms what I was thinking it was, so that's kind of cool. Well, not what they're doing, but you know what I mean, I hope. The next character concept we have to show off can be found at the data center. The level featured in our last newsletter, which I just read off to you, because this is apparently more relevant to data center than anything else. And we got this guy that kind of reminds me of freaking SCP, like the foundation guards with their armor and stuff, but you look at this guy and it kind of looks goofy as hell. Like, why would you need gunmen on this premises and them holding like a bun <laughs> just to like make it seem like they're working there? They just put wires on their freaking belts right there. Like, what, what, what kind of, it's kind of retarded <laughs> if you ask me. Like, hey, what kind of technicians are these guys over here? I'm not too sure, but they're carrying wires on their belt, so I assume they're important. Mind jolt. That's so goofy. He's like, yeah, I work at a tech center. He just has like a cable attached to his thing, but he also wears a body vest and a helmet. Like, that just feels so weird to me. Maybe there's a reason why these security guards are a little more armed to the teeth than usual ones, I guess. But they're doing like a really poor job of trying to hide the fact that they're security guards. But underneath this picture, it says the data they're guarding is more valuable than gold. They sure dress like it. The Mind Jolt security team is well-trained, professional, and equipped with bleeding edge gear. They're well compensated to ensure that their client's information, no matter what it may be, is safeguarded from any threat. This is their territory. Tread carefully. Lastly, we want to take a look at some concepts of a few characters that we've kept under wraps until now we're very excited to show off 815 uh which i'm assuming has to do with the arg that has now been named something dumb compared to carcosa i don't even know how to say it the sh the sepulcher I don't even know how to say that. But it has a guy that kind of looks like Hank from Breaking Bad on here. But I think he's actually that old guy. I forget his name. Prescott. He kind of looks like that guy. The old guy. It kind of looks like he's wearing the SWAT uniform. Which makes me think that this guy might be a double agent. I'm not too sure. But definitely looks like he has demons over his shoulders. If I had to guess. He probably has something that's haunting him from his past, most likely. But underneath the picture it says, Wake up, remember, your country needs you. But anyways, pushing on to the next thing here. There is not an end. Every road converges upon you. Every bloom becomes us. Listen to them. Listen. Breathe. And then it shows a picture of a guy that looks like he's pointing a gun at his head, but both faces aren't exactly there. The guy that's pointing a gun at his head is obviously not a cop. It looks like he's a part of that one group that I can't remember the name of. The MLO, if I'm not mistaken, because it's been so freaking long since I've talked about them. But underneath it, it says, you're not a hero, not a king, not a god. Just mulch for us all. Where has it gone? 
upon you. This heaven scorned fury, the blood seeps through you, your eyes blinded by viscera. You're disgusting. You don't even have to be this way. You don't have to be this way. You can be more. And it shows a weird picture of a man turning into a plant, possibly. Or maybe it's the plant that's turning into a man sitting on some sort of throne. Is this an allegory for the cycle of life? What happens to your body after death? Mm, not too sure. Underneath this it says, the plus blooms, our roots take hold. A throne for our vaunted sepulture. May we all claim it. Whatever that means. But this includes their 34th bi-weekly briefing. And uh, yeah, honestly, the whole ARG thing, I'll probably like do it and look into it, make a video about it. But I'm just not as enthused as I used to be with it because right around the time that they were actually doing it, it kind of just like killed the hype for me. So I'm not as like, oh, well, I need to go find this and do that. I'll get to it, but I'm just not as enthused as I used to be, you know? I don't even like the new name of the stupid thing. I preferred Carcosa over the Sel Se Sepulcher however you say that. And the reason why is because we put so much effort into it only to find out that it was just like not even completed and it was just like a bunch of random shit. And it was during a time when Void Interactive was like stupid quiet and we didn't understand what was going on or if the game was even like being made or anything like that. So it just kind of like killed the hype for me. But I mean, we'll see, I guess. They do say that if you are, well, I mean, it was a long time ago that they said this, but if you're someone that actually figures out what the hell it all means, there is apparently a prize for it. And honestly, Honestly, I don't really care too much about the prize, but I mean, if somebody wants it, then I guess they can go for it. Who knows what the prize will actually be? And uh, yeah, I guess that's just the video. More Carcosa stuff or the Selpo Sedingus fucking name. What are your guys' thoughts? Are you still interested in the ARG? If you're interested in the ARG, then I'll definitely look into it. Like, you gotta yell at me to do shit, you know? But yeah. All right, I'm gonna end it here. If you enjoy the fact that I cover games like Ready or Not, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon or hop on that join button that's underneath the video. Any donation helps to keep the channel running. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on Ready or Not or any other game that I decide to cover. Now, with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye